From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Oh my, we have quite a program for you today and we're going to be talking about something that we are hearing so much about, like never before in my lifetime, but um, it's something we have to be very much aware of. And I'd like for you to take a look at this first headline that I have for you, please, from the Wall Street Journal. Please take socialism seriously. The debate rises, basic moral questions we've long ignored. We better watch out. Socialists don't know history. Young people don't remember the Soviet nightmare. But what's Sanders' excuse? There's some people that should know. Here we go, the dangers of creeping toward socialism, socialism. All right, and then my oh my. Here we are, Venezuela, the view from what happened in Venezuela. Jack and I were there before they went into socialism. It was a great democracy. The people had, in fact, it was the most flourishing democracy in all South America. Now, the people don't have enough to eat. And there you see the refugees at ground level there, the refugees. My heart goes out to the people. You know, I'll tell you what, de democracy, is not compatible with socialism and not compatible. Friends, I really believe this. It's not compatible with our Constitution. Now, you know, Jack, I'm looking at the Bible as my way of life. And the Bible is very much a democracy because in the Bible it says, choose you this day who you will serve. We have a choice with socialism, and we're going to be talking about the others, uh, there's no choice. You have to go this way, their way, or no way. And so uh, I thank the Lord that the Bible is very open. We can make a choice. Choose you this day who you will serve. We can serve the Lord, or we can serve Satan. I thank God for an openness like that, Jack, from God. Let's see what the Word of God has to say. That's the answer for all human beings forever. And um, first of all, the famous verse that we all know and love, John 3, 16. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So if you receive them, you've got everlasting life. That's one choice. Now, that's verse 16. Let's go two verses further, 18. He that believeth on Christ is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already. You're lost. You made your choice. Verse 36 of that same chapter. You believe it. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on it. That's eternal hell. That's why the book of Revelation says, outside of heaven are the fearful, the young believers, the abominable, which are whoremongers, murderers, sorcerers, idolaters, and liars. And they shall have a part in the lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone forever and ever, and on which there is no release. But mm -hmm. praise the Lord, I got a tremendous book called the Holy Bible. And 804 times says you don't have to go there because of Jesus. 804 times. If he said it once, you could believe it. But 400 times it says Jesus is the only way. I am the truth, the life. No man, no woman can come to the Father but by me. Believe Jesus. And 404 times 
It says, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin. I don't care what you've done, how often you've done it, how hideous or heinous or vile it is. You don't have to be in hell. The blood of Jesus cleanses from every single Amen. sin that's ever been committed. <laughs> Praise the Lord for Jesus and Calvary's cross and made him to be able to say it was the only way because of that bloodshed that day. Amen. You know, Jack, I was just sitting here thinking that God doesn't put anyone in hell. They make a choice. How wonderful it is that when we choose the Lord, when he said, I am the way, we choose him. Yeah. We don't have to fear anything. We're ready for heaven by oh, our choice. Oh, the that there is therefore not no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now, we're talking about socialism, and my, my eyes have really been opened just in the last few days as to what it will be like here in America. Take a look, please, at the McAvaney Intelligence Advisor. What the coming socialist America will look like. I'm going to read just a little bit of this, friends. Anyone who falls for this monstrous socialism Ponzi scheme and actually votes for it has no clue that they're about to lose all of their freedoms. Socialism is communism implemented with a huge Ponzi scheme. I'm going to skip down. At first, this seems to be unthinking and masses, like well, what would our vote really mean? But then those returns that we get from our vote will be smaller and smaller until they disappear. In other words, friend, they promise a lot, but you don't get it in return. In fact, many things disappear. First, your guns are taken along with your right to complain about the new government. All dissonants are silenced, arrested, jailed, and some are simply killed. Study every country that has been taken over by the socialist communists. Russia, Nazi Germany, Cuba, China, Cambodia, Zimbabwe, and presently South Africa and Venezuela. Wow. Understand this pattern and our coming destiny. You have to understand what happened to them, friends. Can you believe where socialism really leads? Right there, it leads to communism. You have no say about your life. Oh, Jack, I want to just get something really, really special here. If, a, if somebody who calls themselves a Christian turns to socialism, will they lose their faith? Is that involved too? In fact, uh, are some of the men who brought in socialism into some of these countries who were Christians, they said they were, they turned from the Lord, didn't they? Oh, some of the greatest Christians are on that video I've got taped. Get into the hands of people and they love Jesus and they became socialists and turned against Jesus. Now, we have a lot of my Baptist brothers who say, once saved, always saved, bunk. The Bible speaks about false Christ and false prophets. And they become unconverted converts. They make a decision that they think they have it and they don't. Now, here's how you can know that you have it. The Bible says, if any man be in the Lord Jesus Christ, he's a new creation. All things and all sins have passed away. Everything's become new. Has that happened to you? Now, you may have something that changes for a few weeks. But the Bible talks about this blessed Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And he can be grieved and quenched. It doesn't talk about the Father having an experience or the son, but the Holy Spirit is the one that has the feeling because the fruit of the Spirit's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. It says against such there is no law. In the light of that, you don't need the Ten Commandments. When you got the fruit of the Spirit, you got it and you live it. Now, what happened to these people? They knew the language. They could quote some of the verses. They even preached. Some are great Christian leaders, and then they became atheists. I'll tell you why. When you grieve and quench the Holy Spirit already mentioned, 
it says that you'll get a spiritual spanking. The Lord will give you a walloping like you never forgot through the Holy Spirit. Now, get ready for the shock of a lifetime. He says, if you sin and you claim to be a Christian and you don't get chastised, it's because you are a bastard. <laughs> That's the Bible I'm quoting God's holy book. That's not a bad word. When a man has a child with a woman, he's not the father. And the real husband doesn't know about it. That child is a bastard. Not a son. That's all it means. Sounds like a rough word. That's all it means. And there are a lot of bastards running around all over America and the world right now because the wife had an adulterous experience. The husband didn't know it. And he thinks it's his kid. Now, if you claim to be a Christian, I'm going to say it again, and you don't get spanked, it's because you are illegitimate. You're not a son. A son, when he gets saved, begins to live the new life. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. New. Old things have passed away. Everything becomes new. Can you be restored? Yes. But if you refuse to be restored, <laughs> chastisement. Chastisement. You know, Dick, yeah. <clears throat> that reminds me sort of the family life. You become Mr. Smith's daughter, but you can do wrong. Mr. Smith, if he sees you do wrong, what's he going to do? He's going to chastise you. You're his daughter. Just like we are children of the Lord. But God chastises us to bring us back to that close walk with him. And that's why a father oftentimes has to chastise the children, to bring them back to walk, a Amen. good walk. Isn't that true, Jack? Oh, that's the book from cover to cover. Amen. Yeah. Well, you know, <clears throat> wherever people believe in the Lord, believe in the Bible, oftentimes communists, radicals will uh, come in and, and try to eliminate them. And we're seeing that now with Israel. You know, Israel believes the Bible. America believes the Bible. And we see them trying to come in now and eliminate our faith because that's what socialism tries to do and communism. I would like you to see what happens to Israel over there. They believe. They truly are. Take a look here, if you will, please. Iran's, we'll refer to again, Foreign Minister affirms the right to execute gays. My word. And blast U.S. and Israel. Can you believe that? I never thought I would ever read a headline like that. They think they have the right to kill. And then going on, Steinitz. And that is the energy minister says, Iran may attack Israel if U.S. standoff escalates. Well, they're just threatening everybody over there. Iran threatens Israel with inferno and vows to improve missile accuracy. Once again, Toronto, I never thought that our neighbor to the north would do this. Sign threatening massacre of Jews at Al-Quad's day. My, oh, my. I can't believe that they would have that kind of a historical massacre of the Jews. On Quad's Day. Oh. And then it's going over to France, too. French man stabs neighbor because he, oh, I want to kill a Jew. <clears throat> I cannot believe, friends. I'm going to be going to Jack here, and he's going to spend a good bit of time explaining God's love for Israel. We don't have a right to kill anyone, and especially those who were chosen by the Lord to be his very, very special people. Jack, the Jewish people are special in the eyes of God, aren't they? Oh, Deuteronomy 7.7. 7. And I want you Palestinians to listen because you are anti-Semitic and you call yourselves Christian. You guys either get right with God or throw your Bibles out the window because you don't believe what they say. Deuteronomy 7, 7. 
The Lord did not set his love upon you, Israel, because you were the most of any people. You were the fewest, but because he loved you, Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go on. Now, God the Father, Jehovah, puts this in the form of a love story, but he's a sexless being. He's a spirit. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the three are one God, but they're all spirits. One would become flesh to take a body to die on the cross, but they'll never speak. But what about it? All right, God is talking as a sexless being, but he wants to show his love for the Jew. He said, Israel, you're the apple of my eye. Israel, you're my betrothed, my fiancé. Israel, you're my wife. Israel, I will give you a name forever and forever and forever. And that name is Israel and it's going to stay. I don't care who you are, what denomination you are, and if anybody wants to kill every Jew there is, it's you. The terrorist, the greatest terrorist in the world, Muslim. 57 denominations. You're getting ready now in America even to kill Christians. I will not back down. I will speak up because when God called me to preach, I took 2 Timothy 4 to reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And that's what I'm doing. Now, you just began to hear about God's love for the Jew. You know what Jesus said? Salvation is of the Jews. And God said, I'm going to put my son in the world. We're all spirits. But somebody has to die for sinners and there's no bloodshed. The blood of animals cannot take away sins, only cover it. And because they're only covered and not taking away, they can't come to heaven. So Jesus is going to die so you can go to heaven. And Christ shed his blood at Calvary's cross. And the Bible says... The day of his resurrection, he went to the place called Hades. And he released all the Jews who were in there because they got to that place. And that was the comfort side. But they couldn't go to heaven. They still had their sins. But Jesus said, Israel, I'm the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I've come to release you and take you to heaven. Now, the ones that were on the suffering side are pictured this way. I can't take it. Will you dip your finger in water, Lazarus, and rub my tongue from tormented in this flame? Hell is a terrible place to be loved. That's the difference between the two. And all those who became Christians immediately went to heaven, absent from the body, present with the Lord. It's been that way since. That's where they all are. Jews, Christians, Gentiles, Belgians, Germans. I don't care who you are. Jesus' blood is for everybody. All right. Now, what's going to happen in the near future? Islam's going to really take over. 57 of their denominations. You know what they're... Four laws are, thou shalt kill your daughter if she has premarital sex. Thou shalt kill all homosexuals. Thou shalt kill any of our members who say one word against Allah or Muhammad. And fourthly, you kill everyone who's not a Muslim. I don't care if they're Buddhist or Confucianist or what they are, and especially the Christians. And you know what? This great God, Jehovah, isn't their God. They even hate Jesus. You know what's in the Quran? Eight times. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you will burn in hell forever. What blasphemous doctrine. But let's go further. If you kill all these people, you know what their God says when they get there? Allah. He said, get this. All that you get 72 virgins of peace to do everything you want sexually for years to come. 72 of them! Need I say more? Oh, my, Jack. And many socialists have become 
that. It, it gone into communism, gone into atheism, everything. God help us. Now, does God still love the Jew? When the rapture comes, all the Jews of the past are going to be raised from the dead. He said, I saw a great mystery. A mystery something there the first time. The dead in Christ rise first. The Jews and the others, all who had ever died, absent from the body, present with the Lord, but the bodies are in the grave. You can never die, eternal life or eternal existence. Because the spirits are there, the body's gone back to dust, they're raised. I saw the dead, small and great, and they were raised. And then he said, I saw all the translated ones, the Christians who are raptured, and their bodies are changed, and they go to be with Jesus forever. They judge them all. They get their crowns. Five crowns. Oh, I wish I could get into that today. The soul winner's crown. Are you going to get it? Have you ever won a soul? What are you going to say when Jesus said, who have won? Nobody, Lord, has saved 60 years. God help you. Five crowns. And we're going to come back with Jesus. We come back with him. The second coming is not just of Jesus alone. The Bible says they get on ship. He's created a great thing. It is 1,500 miles long, wide, and high. It can take care of every human being who's ever become a Christian. And he says, all on board, let's go. <laughs> and the second coming of Christ is not just that. It's every believer who's ever been washed in the blood of Jesus coming with him, millions, millions. And that's why I am now promoting the world for Christ's crusade and the billions of souls for Christ. And that hour, we're going to present them. And God just called me on Easter Sunday to become that prophet who's going to have a great part in this. Thank you, Jesus. Does God still love the Jew? I close. He's not putting up his eternal place for Jews and Christians. The millions who come back at the rapture and after the rapture to earth. He's setting his world headquarters up, the kingdom of heaven on earth forever and ever. In Rome, no. New York, no. Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an everlasting name, Israel, because I love you. And I just wrote to all the guys in the Jews for Jesus Ministries, said, I want to back you and stand with you. Amen. Amen, Jack. Amen. Well, you know, one thing, friends, that we truly need to be ready for, and that is the coming of the Lord. And I've said this so often on our program that none of us really know. We could be gone tomorrow through an accident or through some a heart attack or whatever. But how good it is to know that when we have Jesus in our hearts, we're ready to go. Amen. We're going home to be with him. And I don't care what country you're living in, we are now giving the message in every country of the world, wherever you are, if you'll ask Jesus to come into your heart, be your savior, he will. He died for you and he said, come unto me. The Lord wants to be your Savior. He'll forgive you of anything if you'll come. Amen. Pray this wonderful Amen. prayer with Jack. As we close this program today, become a child of God. Jack. We now reach 7,600,000,000 every week. We're the largest missionary organization that has ever existed. No one's ever reached that many. God called me and this beautiful woman to be the ones that introduce Christ to the world. Will you pray this right now? You know, I wish Rochelle could sing the song she often does. Think what it means to be lost forever. No one to guide you across that cold river. It's a horrible thing to be lost. You don't have to be. If you believe, you can have eternal life. Father, thank you for your holy book. I now believe in this, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. 
and I receive you as my own personal Savior today. I want to become your son or your daughter. Come into my heart. I want you. I ask it in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I don't, like I said, I don't care where you live, what country you live, and if you'll write to me, I'll send you this wonderful booklet, First Steps in a New Direction, you know, absolutely free. We want you to grow in the Lord. We want you to walk with the Lord. Amen. We want you to be oh, ready oh, uh, to be his child and witness how good it is uh, to walk with the Lord in a day like this. Our mailing address is Jack Vanipi Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. Remember to ask for your free copy of the book of First Steps when you write. Our address, once again, is Jack Penipi Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. You'll be glad you did. You know, friends, a socialist America, I never dreamed. In fact, I really have to confess, I didn't know what socialism was all about in depth. I knew that it led to something that wasn't good. But the USA seems to be following along in the footsteps of so many other uh, countries that have gone that way. I told you about it a minute ago. China and Russia and so many others. Socialism leads to communism and so many other bad things. But the, the truth is going to astonish you on here what it's all about. So here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive this very needed, needed DVD, A Socialist America. All right, Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend, to order A Socialist America. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanipy Ministries. Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada. Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so much, Chuck. And uh, everything you want to know about socialism is on here, what it is and how America's moving toward it and all the rest. So be sure and make a call or write to us today. You know, friends, so many of us, so many of us do not have peace in this terribly troubled world. But you can have peace. How wonderful it is. For peace that lasts, amen, put God first. How good it is to walk with the Lord Amen. in these troubles Amen. and troubles. And days. We look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, always remember, God cares for you, and so do we so very much. We'll see you next week, and God bless you as you walk with Him. Bye-bye. The preceding program was sponsored by the partners of Jack Vanapie Ministries.